Hi traders, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use a new feature that the TradingView team recently added to PineScript. This week, I was planning to release the seventh video in my auto view series, where I show you how to expand the strategy script that we wrote in the previous lesson and add a bunch of filters to that script. But this week we had a gigantic market crash in the crypto markets. And so I've been very, very busy managing my own money and actively trading this week. I actually had the most profitable day of my entire career yesterday, trading this correction on Cardano. I managed to buy very, very close to the bottom at $1.04 US, which resulted in me having my very first six figure profitable trading day, which was pretty exciting to say the least. I managed to sell up here at $2.37. Uh, I sold roughly half of my holdings and I bought back in at $1.04, which is the best trade I've ever made in my entire life. And here is the proof that on the 16th, I actually did sell half of my Cardano position at $2.37 up on this wick here. Um, just really quickly, the reason why I did that was because on a five minute time frame, uh, we began making lower lows and lower highs. And so I sold on this retracement here and I was fully prepared to buy back in if I was wrong and price broke out above this previous high, but price never did break through that previous high. And in fact, we had one of the biggest market crashes that I've seen in crypto in a very long time. But anyway, I'm not saying all of this just to brag. I'm just pointing out that over the years, I have become very, very confident in my own trading techniques and processes. And I do plan to create a trading course later this year, demonstrating and explaining how I analyze charts, why I picked all of these key support and resistance levels on my chart, why I sold up here and bought back down here. And in fact, I sold some more of my position in here at around $1.80 on a lower time frame, And I have already bought back in to my position down at $1.70. So in a matter of two or three days, I have significantly increased my Cardano holdings using extremely simple trading techniques. And I'm really excited to pass on the knowledge that I've learned over the past four or five years of trading. And so if you're interested in learning how I trade, keep an eye out for that course, which I'll start rolling out at some point later in the year. Hopefully, if I get time, it's actually really hard to find the time to make all of these videos when I'm actively trading my own accounts and managing my own investments. But anyway, enough about that. Let's get into today's video. Next week, I'll pick up where I left off in the previous auto view video. But for today, we're just going to cover an extremely simple but interesting PineScript update that the team made where we can now work with color gradients. So overnight, the PineScript team added a new functionality or feature to PineScript dealing with colors. So we now have more control over the colors we use in our scripts. It's a small change, but it's a nice change for those of you who like to have your scripts look more aesthetically pleasing. So this will just be a quick video explaining the new changes and how you can use them in your scripts. So they've added a couple of new functions to PineScript. The first one is this color.rgb function, which takes four function parameters, which is your red color, green color, blue color, and transparency. Now, those of you who are familiar with other programming languages and have used RGB coloring before will already be familiar to this sort of method for generating colors. So the numbers are between zero and 255, zero being no green or no red or no blue and 255 being uh, bright red, bright green, bright blue. So this is a little bit different to hexadecimal coloring and perhaps a little more intuitive. So I'll leave a link to this article beneath this video. The PineScript team have included a couple of examples of how to use this code, but we'll jump over to the Pine editor in a moment and play around with an example. So that's the first change that I've made is this new color.rgb function. The second function that they've added is this color.fromgradient function, which allows you to change the color of something on your chart based on where the value falls between two numbers. So in this particular example, the script is plotting the RSI and the closer the RSI is to 70, the more red the RSI turns and the closer it is to 30, the more green the RSI turns. And this is all achieved using this new from gradient function. So you can see here they're passing the RSI value, they're passing their lower limit and their upper limit, 
and the two colors they want to uh, calculate the gradient between. And the closer the RSI value is to 30, the closer the color is to lime green. And the closer that value is to 70, the closer the color is to red. And you can see that this allows you to achieve some pretty cool stuff on your charts. It can really make some of these scripts look a lot more futuristic and modern. So let's jump over to the Pine editor and break down this particular example. I've just added a few comments to this script to better explain what's going on here. So this script is just plotting an RSI, standard RSI, 14 length period, with the price source being the closing price. The first thing that's happening here is we're creating a custom function that takes two parameters. One is the color we want to work with, and the other is the transparency we want to work with. And so later on, the script is filling the background. It might be a bit hard to see because of how faint or transparent the coloring is, but the background of this RSI is changing color based on the color of the RSI. So we'll come back to this custom function in a moment. Let's go over how the RSI coloring works first, because this function depends on uh, the RSI color being a parameter. So the first thing we do is just get the RSI here. The second thing we do is get the color gradient of the RSI. So that's the actual color of this line that is plotting onto the chart. We do this using the color.fromGradient function, which takes several parameters. The first one is the value we want to reference. The second parameter is our bottom value. So the closer this value gets to our bottom value, the closer the color will be to our bottom color. And the closer this value is to our top value, the closer the color will be to this top color. So if we wanted to, we could change this to anything. We could change this to uh, blue and color.green, for example. If I save the script, uh, the gradient will change. So this is a really cool feature that makes it extremely simple to basically create like a heat map kind of effect. So let me change these back for a moment and move on to this custom function here. So the next thing we do is we just draw our upper and lower limit uh, we're using the new color.rgb function just to demonstrate how this works. So this is your red, green, blue value. And as you can see, this upper limit, the overbought limit, has a higher red amount than blue and green. And that makes the color more red. And once we plot our upper and lower limit, we then fill the background between these two limits with this color function here, which is this custom function and we're passing the color gradient of the RSI, so the color of our RSI line, into that custom function, along with a transparency amount, which in this case is 90, so 90% 90 transparency. Then this function is getting the red value from our RSI color, then it's getting the green value and the blue value, and then we are rebuilding that color using the color.rgb function. We're passing in the red value, the green value, the blue value, and our transparency here, which is again, 90%. So there are obviously more efficient ways to do what the script is doing. This is purely just demonstrating how we can use these new functions in a practical manner in our scripts. And it's actually pretty cool. For example, one use case for this might be uh, a heat map, like I mentioned. So I have a Arvol by time script here that I created uh, many months ago, and it has a heat map color scheme here. And I had to custom code the color gradients here. So the more volume that was printed on a bar, the brighter the color is. I could actually add uh, this color gradient functionality to this script, which would mean I don't have to hard code the color gradients. So that's it for today's example of this latest PineScript update. If you want more information, I'll leave a link to the blog article beneath this video. And I've got a few more examples over there, a few more code examples, but that'll do it for today. Thanks for watching. Best of luck with your trading and coding, and I'll see you in the next lesson.